Hey guys, it's Luke with Holistic Survival School. Today I'm going to show you uh, some friction fire technique using a bow drill. So with all friction fires, basically the general idea is we're rubbing two pieces of wood together, heat them up, break down that wood, and create a coal. If you haven't made friction fire before, I recommend bow drill. It's great for beginners. It's, it's good practice to learn. It's the easiest physically. Um, there are a lot of moving parts since we have four components with our bow drill. First component, we have a spindle. Kind of a pencil sized straight piece of wood that's gonna be dry. Here I have a piece of sagebrush that I've cut. Uh, it's got a little bit of a, you can see when I rotate, it's not completely straight. It's gonna give me a little bit more of a challenge. Ideally, you want it to be nice and straight and uniform all around. You should be able to look down it and kind of see just a perfect circle. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is taking this, this spindle and I'm going to be rotating it into my fire board. So you can tell my fire board is flat. It's got a little bit of length to it so I can put my foot on it and stabilize it when I'm spinning the spindle in it. Uh, I'm also using sagebrush here. A good general rule is to use the same two type of woods. So if you're cutting a willow spindle, also use a willow fireboard. Um, what that does is just create similar hardness in the woods, uh, which will give you a better chance of getting a coal. Now the interesting thing about sagebrush is, is the inside, the inner layer of the wood is actually dead. So there's no moisture inside of it. So I can cut this plant today and I can, you know, I can use it for fire today. Most of the time that doesn't work out for most woods. What you'll need to do is to either find a dead enough piece of wood that it has no moisture in it, or you can cut a live piece and then let it set for a few days, um, a few weeks probably. What I like to do personally is I like to cut a piece and then I'll put it in my car, especially during the summertime, and that sun and that dryness will heat it up and dry it out. So. How are we going to move this spindle? If we're doing this, you know, we're rotating the spindle, getting it hot, how are we going to move it? Well, since we call it a bow drill, we're going to be using a bow. Generally speaking, a bow is just a curved piece of wood with some cordage or some rope, uh, making kind of like a miniature bow and arrow here. However, you don't want it to curve too much because we will be applying pressure to this cordage here. So if we pull on this cordage, we don't want our bow to bend with it. We want it to stay pretty sturdy. Um, for my bow right now I'm using uh, paracord, 3 millimeter paracord, um, it's really tough stuff. You can make primitive cordage using animal hide, uh, sinew, but I, I don't recommend it for the beginner. I recommend getting really good with cordage and then we can, you can go from there and learn uh, more primitive ways after that if you want. So curved piece of wood, that's my bow, that's how I'm going to move the spindle. And then finally the last component, the fourth component of a bow drill is a top socket or um, depending on the material. Basically what, what I have here is a little, it's a kneecap bone from a deer and there's a little groove in it. And what I'm going to be doing is the top of the spindle is going to be in there. So it's going to rotate into that. And what that's doing is I can just push down on it and make sure I can control this spindle as I'm spinning it wildly. So to recap, the four components are spindle, fireboard, bow, and top socket. So now that we've got our four components ready, we wanna dig a hole into our fireboard with our spindle. We're gonna make sure our spindle is sharpened a little bit. Kinda of make it about pencil sharpness, the end that's gonna go into the fireboard. We all also wanna make sure that our top part of our spindle, it's gonna go into our top socket, fits nicely in there. Sometimes you can sharpen it a little bit, uh, that will help it kinda of fit in there tightly. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my knife and we're going to find a spot in the fireboard where we want the spindle to rotate. Okay, so the key is we don't want the spindle too close to the edge, but we don't want it too far in either. We want it about, well the edge of the spindle is about a quarter of an inch from the outside edge. So what I'm going to do is with my knife, I'm just going to start a hole. Not too deep, just a little bit. Just enough so that my spindle, the sharpened end, will be able to rotate in that hole without going anywhere else. So now that we've got a hole, we want this spindle on my cordage in my bow. Okay. So what I like to do personally, I like to put my bow in my armpit so I got both my hands free. You can see when I push a little weight down, put my weight forward, it kind of loosens my cordage here, kind of gets loose. When the cordage is looser, it's easier to string your spindle. It's easier to string the bow. So I'll kind of pinch it with my fingers and I'll just wrap the cordage around the top of it. And once I get to this point, I push this way and I pull that way. So it's wrapped around one time. It's wrapped around one time. Okay. So now that I got my spindle, I can kind of hold it with both my hands. It's not going to go anywhere. See, my bow is kind of loose. I don't care about that. Just as long as the spindle 
doesn't whip out because it will whip you and it does hurt so you gotta be careful so now I'm gonna get my board in a good spot I'm gonna get my top socket in my left hand if you're right-handed I like to have my left foot forward my right knee back so ideally what I want is my, I want my left arm to parallel my left leg okay so what that's gonna look like is where my left shoulder is I want it close to my knee kind of want my armpit almost in my knee most of my left arm is going to be parallel to my left leg my left wrist is going to be parallel with my left ankle okay and the more I connect here the less likely this whole thing is going to move if it's just my arm out by itself on an island yeah it's going to wiggle a lot it's going to be hard to control I'm going to put my foot on my fireboard to stabilize it put my spindle into that hole I'm gonna put the top socket right on top of that spindle. So now the key is when I wanna start moving this bow, it's just gonna spin. The spindle wants to move in other directions, but that's what my top socket's for. My top socket's keeping it right in line with the hole. So you can tell I'm using long bow strokes, and my bow strokes are level. My bow's staying the same height above the ground the whole time. People tend to want to do like these arcing swoops, what that does, it makes your spindle want to kick out. So nice and level strokes, almost like you're sawing through a piece of wood. You can see smoke starts billowing out. That's good. I got some punk, some wood debris that's coming out. That's good. So that means I'm just drilling a nice hole. All right. So you can see I've got some smoke, so that's a good sign. But you can see how my punk is kind of all the way around the circle. This punk is what I call this little wood dust that's kind of shown up. That's what's gonna form our coal eventually. But right now, all the heat is going in all different directions. What we wanna do is we wanna make all this punk get in one area, we wanna condense it. So what we need to do is create a trench. We're gonna make a little pizza pie or triangle shaped cut a third of the way into the hole. So where the, the two edges meet, that corner, we want that to go a third of the way depth into the hole. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a saw, you can use a knife. Before I saw too far, I'm just gonna take a look. And I say, yeah, that's about the right angle I want. And you gotta be careful with the saw because it can ruin your hole quickly and then you have to start all over. Remember, we only want this triangle going a third of the way into the hole. So looking pretty good still, check it again. Do the same thing with the other side. So now that I've done the general cut, I'm going to do the fine tuning of the hole with a knife. All right, got that trench looking good. Third of the way in, triangle shaped. Now we can go for a coal. All right, so it's time for us to get a coal after we've cut our trench. I gotta make sure that, so all my punk is gonna fall to the ground through the trench and I got, got a piece of bark underneath to catch it. Once again, when I'm bowing for a coal, I'm just looking for nice, long, smooth strokes. Steady that arm here. Just long, easy bow strokes to start off with. Let the bow do all the work. You don't want little strokes like this. You want long, smooth bow strokes. All right, so I think I have a call, so I'm gonna carefully remove the spindle. I'm going to carefully remove my board. Alright, so you can tell it's a coal because it's smoking by itself. So now I'm going to bring the nest to the coal. Bringing the nest to the coal, never the coal to the nest. The coal is very fragile. My nest is sturdier. So you can see it's smoking still. If I flap it, you can give it some oxygen. So I don't want to rush it, I want to let it build up a little bit. I'm going to get my nest ready. When I put the coal in, I'm going to put it in the central spot. I'm going to pinch it like a taco, lift it up. Long, slow breaths. The more smoke I see coming from my nest, the more oxygen I can give it. Be very careful. This thing is very fragile. So the coal's in there, and I pinch it. And I lift. The heat wants to go up. So I see more smoke so I can give it more breath. There we 
of flames. So now the point of that bird's nest, remember the small stuff was in the inside. If you haven't checked out that video, check it out. How about to make a bird's nest with Juni bark. It's pretty well caught, but you know, if I were making this into a full fire, I'd keep blowing on it. I could get a flapper to kind of flap some wind into it. And I'm in the desert right now in July, and so I'm going to put this out before it gets out of control. Hey guys, thanks for watching the bow drill demonstration video. Um, if you're new to this friction fire sort of thing, you're trying to get into this world, I recommend practicing a lot with the bow drill. It's the most simple of all the friction fire techniques. Although there are a lot of moving pieces with four different components, it can be challenging, but at the same time, as long as you're aware of what's happening, try to really look into pieces. Why is this bow drill working? Why isn't it working? If you want to get more into this kind of stuff, um, check out uh, my YouTube channel. Find me on Facebook, find my fan page, or you can come connect with me on my website, which is holisticsurvivalschool.com. We'll have some classes coming up. We'll be teaching bow drills. So if you're in the area, we'd love to have you come out and learn some of this fire stuff. Thanks for watching.